generative AI and large language models have been consuming more and more energy, consuming power and therefore energy, um, and, and mostly in training and even more so uh, in inferencing. Now, the, the question is how to do these sustainably? Well, the key, key thing here is resource efficiency at many levels, right? Starting at a chip level, uh, one example would be where, where uh, chips today, like the GPUs, are driven at maximum power all the time. So groups are working on dynamic power where they are varying the power depending on workload need. Another example is you have GPU chips and CPU chips separate and therefore consuming power in copying data between the two. So developers are now moving the two closer and closer together, reducing energy uh, consumption. And as such, uh, if, if, there is also one company looking at putting the two together using one piece of memory, and as a result, uh, removing that uh, power consumption of copy. Next level up is at the system level. Here on the left, you see uh, general purpose cloud applications are typically many workloads running on many nodes. Very different from large language models where you have one big workload running on many nodes. Well, big workload because it is large, the large language model. Now, because all these nodes below that one workload are working together, coming in bulk, we can do something about efficiencies there. Many examples there. Well, let's use the fan, the blow example to move air. On the left, you have many, many small fans that need to fit inside the nodes. As a result, many small fans across all these nodes. And because on the right, all these nodes come in bulk, we can use very big fans that are at the rack level. In engineering, a big fan is much more efficient than many small fans. Now, very similar to um, how an 18-wheeler truck is much more efficient at moving a big load than, say, a convoy of 30 pickup trucks. Much more efficient. So this is where one efficiency area comes in. You can do this with not only fans, but also pumps and power supplies, all that in the design of your system. Now that's the energy part of system. There is also the water part that is used a lot. One cloud provider, public cloud provider, a major one, uses up one Olympic size swimming pool of water per day, per day, uh, data center. That's a lot of water being evaporated. They, they use this in, as follows. They send the heat out of the data center, blow fans to remove the heat, not enough. They spray water at it. This is very similar to us sitting in front of fan blowing uh, at our faces. But if we are still not cool enough, we spray water. So they use up a lot of these water spraying right, to cool uh, the data centers. What we do at our highest end system is to run our systems with warmer inlet. And as such, we can remove the spraying of the water most of the time and just use fans, therefore conserving a lot of water at the same time. At the AI model level, let's have a look. Right, We've seen this before where the top left-hand node is connected to everything on the right and so on, and then we repeat that. That's 1,000 connections, but keep in mind, these large language models are a million times more complex than this. They have a trillion connections, right? And uh, as such, uh, there are companies looking at ways to trim down on this, where instead of investing in scaling bigger and bigger, they invest in keeping it small and invest in squeezing the most out of their connections. Another area of optimization of, of efficiency is that every time you send an input, all the connections fire up and then it infers and produces the output. Same thing again. If the input changes, all the uh, connections fire up, a trillion connections fire up to produce the output. So the groups are looking at ways where they are getting smart about this, right? They put in smarts in their connections to say that uh, have a, a mixture of experts where they partition the connections up so that when you send an input in, only the needed portions of the connections are fired up to produce the output. And then the, when the next word comes in, the next needed portion is fired up to produce the output and so on, right? Only the needed portions are fired up where necessary instead of all the connections. And in measurement, right? In order to optimize for efficiency, you need to also measure to find out what you are using and are you improving? 
So this is where the HPE Sustainability, uh, Sustainability Insight Center under HPE GreenLake comes in. It not only gives you a dashboard across all your data center of energy consumption, summary of uh, energy cost, as well as carbon emissions. You've heard that, uh, you can get more details about that. And to complete uh, the whole story, right, of all the different levels of efficiencies needed to get towards uh, sustainability for AI, um, that we've heard about uh, e-waste, right? Uh, old equipment, e-waste. Now, what's more sustainable than e-waste is recycle. And in fact, what's more sustainable than recycle is reuse. And this is what our technology renewal centers, the two of them across the US and US, uh, UK, 450,000 square feet uh, dedicated to refurbishment. In this case, refurbishing servers to customer requirement and then stacking them in, in racks uh, as, as per requirement and needed. And we also deal with lots of scrub, securely scrubbing of storage devices. In fact, we scrub something like 1,000 terabytes worth of data, yeah, for, and then eventually ship them out as HPE certified pre-owned. To give you an, an, an idea of scale, right? Uh, last year, we refurbished and remarketed. We, we took in four, over 4 million pieces of IT assets and refurbished, remarketed for servers, 86% of them with remaining recycled. Very little e-waste here. And then finally, uh, we've also heard that customers are asking, in fact, partners are asking, and also investors are asking, what are, is our net zero commitment? Well, we went for the and we went for the and participated in the toughest and most comprehensive stand, standard out there, the SBTI, the Science, Science Based Target Initiative. To give you an idea how comprehensive and tough it is, out of the eight thousand co companies participating in SBTI, only nine percent across the world have got their net zero year approved, and only two uh, in IT. Yeah, uh, for twenty forty uh, net zero year. So in summary, many levels of resource efficiencies are needed, needed in order to work towards sustainable AI. This is an insight from Global Marketing.